Welcome to the Elizabeth Cunningham Show, Courageously Expanding Love with me, Elizabeth Cunningham. Has the way that love has arisen in you seemed out of place or even taboo? My mission is to expand the conversation of love in the world. Is it possible to have deep, loving, healthy relationships? Have you ever been curious about having more than one relationship or partner at a time? Get ready to transform in love. Be courageous and set yourself free. In this show, we talk about relationships, sex, love, and the ways we wish we could be, but never thought were possible. I shed light on things that are not always talked about with conversations about expanding love. The Elizabeth Cunningham Show starts now. Hello, and welcome to the Elizabeth Cunningham Show. I am your host, Elizabeth Cunningham, and we are here to courageously expand love. Thank you all so much for tuning in, listening in, watching whatever mode or modality you are currently digesting this show from. Um, so, so, so happy to be here. And today we are talking about queer dating in a heteronorm heteronormative world. Wow. Um, with Leanna Greech and uh, Leanna. Hello. What's welcome. Up? Thank you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. Let me properly introduce you. So Leanna is a certified coach um, who is in the realm of love and relationships within the queer community. Uh, she began studying relationships and communication as a teenager, and she quickly learned through her own dating struggles um, that a heteronormative narrative around love didn't truly fit her desires. And then through her studying, she realized quickly that her passion of all topics related to relationships began with working with members of the queer community to support them in creating relationships that they actually desire instead of conforming to the heteronormative narrative. So Leanna now works with her clients to support and empower them to change limiting beliefs around what's possible for queer partnerships so that they can know authentic, deep love inside and out. Isn't that the best? It's amazing. I love that. Whoever wrote that is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> they make you sound so good. I know. Wow. Jeez. Someone needs a raise with that one. <laughs> I'll put in, I'll put in a good word. Thank Nathan. you. Appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> but really, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm really excited that you are here. Um, and I want to dive right in. And my first question, I'm always trying to think about like, okay, what would be like the first question that someone would ask if I said, we're talking about queer dating in a heteronormative world. And the first question is, what is heteronormative? What, is, what does that even mean? <laughs> what oh, are you they talking don't, about? They don't teach like, the kids that word just every day. No? Just like, <laughs> okay, professor, like, what are we talking about? <laughs> okay, hold on. I didn't bring the whiteboard. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's, great question to start off valid question to start off um yeah and so like i mean heteronormative is basically you know it's going to be you don't really think about it unless you are outside of the heteronormative standard because you don't fit into that and so it's the the template of you know man meets woman they fall in love you know they get they go on the relationship escalator they date for a little bit they get married have kids, have a house. It's fantastic. Everyone looks at them like, oh, they're normal. Um, you know, it's it's when you go outside of that, such as when you have queer people coming together and trying to figure out relationships based on this heteronormative standard, right? It's trying to follow a template that you don't have the pieces to actually follow to the T, right? Um, and so it's it's really just getting clear that outside of just, you know, this straight kind of narrative, there are other possibilities. We just don't often get taught it or think about it until you have to. Yeah. So what is the, uh, and, and hetero coming from, I'm just going to like totally even break it down even farther. So it's like hetero meaning heterosexual. So like 
if you are, you know, self-identifying as like a, you know, cisgendered man, self-identifying cisgendered woman, they get together, you know, they have their relationship with each other and the relationship escalator, which is like the, you know, courting, dating. I'm using the word courting because I am from the Midwest. Um, I was like, wow, that's so old fashioned. <laughs> Courtney. People are old-fashioned. Some yeah. people are old-fashioned. I got it. I, I know. I know. There's chaperones. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, you know, dating and then kind of the, you know, expectation that you get married, expectation that you get a house, expectation you have babies, you know, all that stuff. So that being the relationship ex- escalator. Um, and uh, and then I guess my, my other question is, you know, queer is such a huge umbrella, Mm-hmm. And so what, what does queer mean? Like, what do you, what do you mean by queer, I guess? Yeah. I mean, and that, <laughs> I was about to be like, well, so <laughs> everyone's going to have, you know, if, if you self-identify as queer, you know, it's, it's going to mean a different thing to different people. I mean, I've gotten different definitions from every single client, from my queer friends, from, <laughs> even for myself, it has changed um, over time as well. I mean, So, you know, and so you can think of it, you know, very the umbrella of LGBTQ plus um, as in the alphabet mafia, as I like to (laughs) refer to it. And, (laughs) and so understanding, you know, it's just the, the thing that I can narrow it down is like for queer, it's basically, you know, something that is not fitting into the, that more heteronormative standard. So it might involve, you know, someone who identifies as trans, someone who identifies as a lesbian, someone who identifies as trans lesbian, you know, and so it's, it's just more of figuring out, you know, that you aren't in that, that little neat box, right, Mm -hmm. and so just putting queer as, okay, I'm just unique in some aspect of that, you know, and so um, that's how I like to broaden it out for people, but again, this can mean something completely different to whoever it is that identifies as queer. Yeah, well, and I think that that's kind of a good way to phrase it, just especially for our purposes, you know, mm-hmm. on the show as well. Um, it's just, you know, that's a really broad definition, but really anything that fits outside of the heteronormative box, I'm just going to have problems with that <laughs> word today. I don't, you know, I have problems spelling it out on things. So it's like, <laughs> see, you can't even say it. I can't even spell it. Why are we trying to fit into it? You know? <laughs> That's right. It's a metaphor. Perfect. It's a metaphor. We can't fit in the box. That's right. <laughs> okay. But so how does queer dating differ from straight dating? Like, isn't it just like, you know, even if it's the same gender or like different genders, like how does that differentiate from like person A likes person B, so therefore they have a relationship together. Like, so why are we differentiating between queer and straight dating? Yeah, and, you know, that was a question I asked myself when I initially entered dating for myself. I was like, okay, I like someone, they like me. It's all good, right? Like, that's what happens. Fantastic. And it was in entering with that mentality, that understanding that, okay, wait, people are looking at me differently as I'm out in public with my partner who is a female, right? You know, and, and understand, wait, why are people, you know, saying things to me? Why are people, and so there's these external factors that have to come into this. Yeah, it's, you know, these two people that like each other, fantastic, right? But because of these external people, external situation, external beliefs, and all all the things that swirl around the queer identity, it's no longer just, hey, people, people meet each other, they like each other, all that kind of stuff, right? And so it is, it, in that also, there, there comes the recognition too that in heteronormativity, there is such a privilege that lies in there where you can just go out and you can just relate and it's all good, right? You know, um, but understanding that you, you don't have that privilege anymore once you are in you know, a visibly queer relationship. Um, so there's, there's a lot more layers and complexity to, to it. Yeah. So what are some of the struggle? Whoa. <laughs> well, uh, okay. We're just gonna, you know what? Pause. I'm just gonna slow down, take a breather, take a little sip of water. A little bit of that H2O. 
I'm just so excited to talk about this. I can't speak English. <laughs> you know? All right. Just, we can play charades or something. I'll figure out what you're saying. <laughs> that won't really help for the podcast people, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'll describe what you're doing. It'll yeah. be great. <laughs> All right, so the question I was trying to ask <laughs> is, what are some of the struggles that people face in queer dating? Yeah, so the number one thing that comes up to mind for me specifically is the reason why I got into this specific field of coaching in general um, is the lack of role models and the lack of support, specifically around queer relationships, queer dating, right? Um, you know, so speaking of, you know, the heteronormative standard, right? Like that is, that's the template that we often go into. And so we think, you know, I can speak for myself as well as the experience of my clients is I, I entered into that, that dating space and I was like, oh yeah, I just like follow the movies, right? Like all the rom-coms, we do the things, it's all cool. And understanding that that didn't portray any of the queer identity, right? You know, that didn't portray the queer story, that didn't portray queer struggles in that dating space. And so I always think of it as like, oh, it is the Wild West out here. I don't, I didn't get any role models. I didn't get any support of like, this is how you date queer. This is how you relate queer, you know? Um, and like, you can even think, I was listening to a podcast earlier, all about just about relationships in general. And they were speaking to it and then they go, well, and, and we just want to clarify, this is strictly for, you know, we're only speaking heteronormatively, you know, like even they're recognizing that. So you could be listening to something and you're like, oh my God, this is great. And then they're like, well, it's hetero. So, and so then you start questioning yourself of, wait, so this doesn't apply to me or does it, or, you know, and so it's feeling, you know, you already feel isolated oftentimes in your identity as a queer person. And then you go into the dating space and you feel even more isolated because you don't have any sort of guidance. You don't have any sort of support in that. Um, and so you just either try to follow the heteronormative template and or you follow all the stereotypes that you're like, well, I guess that's what it means to be queer, right? And so you don't really get the, um, the true support of, of moving forward in the way that you desire. Um, so like that would be, that would be number one. Um, and I mean, I guess that kind of relates into it. The other thing is like, you know, they're trying to fit into the heteronormative box. And like I said, you can't fit into it if there's like no spot for you, right? You know, and so round hole, square peg, that kind of deal. Um, and so you can often get lost in that and then start questioning your own queer identity of like, am I doing gay right? Am I doing relationships right? It's not working according to this template. And you know, that's where you start doubting yourself even more, understanding you still don't have the support. And so it's like this, this cycle of I am isolated. Yeah, no, I hear that. And really, especially like when you discover, <laughs> even like discover, and I say discover your queer, because that's like what my experience was. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I use that language. Welcome. Yeah. Discover your queer. <laughs> um, but like, you know, when you discover that about yourself, whether you're five or 25 or 55, whatever, um, it, it can be really isolating, right? Yeah. And and then, you know, to navigate the world in this way. And then yeah, to like put that into a dating context, it's just adds adds another really fun layer on there um and we're going to we are going to go on a break here really shortly um so i what i want to talk about when we get back um are really what are some of the pain points and i you know how i want to frame this is um so that people who are struggling can really see themselves inside yeah. of this um because you know as you mentioned you know that's really what's missing is that you're like I'm alone like I'm dealing with this by myself like who else is dealing with this stuff and so what I really want to um dig into in our next sec section is 
you know, we've talked to the people who don't know what this is and like laid the groundwork, but now yeah. we're going to talk to the people who are in the thick of it and yeah. be like, you're not alone. <laughs> it's okay. My people, my people. <laughs> your people. We're gonna go <laughs> next segment, we're going to talk to your people. Um, <laughs> our people. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Our people, our people. Perfect. All right, so we're going to go on a break and we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to the Elizabeth Cunningham Show, Courageously Expanding Love. And we are here for segment two with Leanna Grieves talking about queer dating, queer dating, queer dating. Yes. And we spent the first segment really laying out, you know, for people who aren't in this space, for people who do fall, you know, fall into the heterosexual uh, category, just like, what are we even talking about? We laid it out. And now we're going to talk to the people who are queer and who are in the queer dating space um, and talk a little bit more about, you know, what you may be experiencing, what struggles that you may be going through. And, uh, um, like what you know one of the things that we mentioned in the first segment is that there's this kind of isolated feeling of just like I'm you know I'm the only one dealing with this or I'm doing it wrong like everyone else knows and I don't <laughs> I know that that's always the category that I fall in whenever, yeah. whenever I feel like I'm doing something alone I'm like I'm doing it wrong clearly I'm, and everyone else the one knows, person the everyone one person. else knows and I don't know <laughs> So what are some of the some of the things that people struggle with um, in queer dating? So oftentimes the very first thing that comes up is going to be the queer scarcity mindset when it comes to especially if you are in the dating space itself um, or if you are currently partnered as well this will still come into play of well there is not a lot of us, you know, like we are this rare species, this rare breed. So there's not a lot of options, which means there's even less good options. Um, and so you enter into the space of like, look, I just need to find someone nice, right? Like, okay, they're queer, they're nice. That's literally what I was looking for. Those were my two criteria as I entered to the dating space. I was like, I mean, as long as they're, they're nice and, and they're also gay, <laughs> fantastic like I think that's what that's what works right gay plus gay equals fantastic rainbows here we go <laughs> <And> so <laughs> you know like you you enter into that and that can also keep you in a partnership of like you know maybe it's it's not what you want it's not working and you know that but then you go well but if I break up with them I have to go back into the dating space and it was already pretty slim when I was there before like it's there's going to be a few droplets in that pond now, you know, I don't, I don't want to go there. And so you start getting into this settling mentality, right? Scarcity is going to lead to that settling mentality. And so if you're dating or if you're in a partnership and going, well, I mean, they're, they're, they're good enough, right? Like they're cool. We don't fight too much. Like it's, it's okay. Like it's, it's all, all gravy. And so you just start to settle in and go, well, and this is the, the phrase that I always hear from clients as well as my friends in, in the space of, I should just be grateful. I should just be grateful that I have, you know, a partner who's, who's nice to me, you know, I should be grateful for that. And why am I trying to seek anything aside from that? And so putting yourself into this box of the false gratitude and the scarcity and kind of just putting yourself into a corner and feeling stuck there. Yeah. And that, that hurts, that hurts my whole heart mm, yeah. when, yeah, when I hear people say that, because it's like, on the one hand, it's true because it's, you know, you, you do want to be grateful for the people in yeah. your life, you know, not to dis not saying you shouldn't be grateful. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but it's also, it is, it does, it does come from that scarcity mindset. It's like, who wants to be the one who's like, oh, they're just grateful that I'm here. Yeah. You know, who wants to, who wants to be that partner? Who wants to be on the receiving end of that kind of gratitude? 
Yeah. Just like, oh, well, I'm just grateful that they exist and that they're here and that I don't have to date anyone else. Exactly. <laughs> right. Like this is the person that's saving me from going back into the dating space, you know, exactly. like, ah, yeah. Like, what am I complaining about? Right. And so you start getting in your head of, well, it's all good. It, it's okay. You know, and, and that starts to, you know, dim that voice of, but there is more possible. There is more that I want, but mm -hmm. you start turning the volume down on that so that you can just say, okay, it's okay. I have a partner or, you know, I'm dating right. someone good, whatever. Yeah. And we can justify anything, you know? Oh yeah. Can, yeah. Humans are amazing at justifying <laughs> any, anything, any yep. extreme example, like humans justify murder all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, well, I had to because of this, or this, da, 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 or they had to do it, or da, da, da. like we literally are justifying machines. And so, yeah, when it comes to our own happiness, it's easier. It's so much easier to justify mm -hmm. and to just be like, oh, yeah, well, it's fine. It's good. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't want to be, I, I would be selfish for asking for more than this. Mm. Right. And, yeah. uh, you know, or, um, if I, if I think that I can get more than this, that means that, you know, I'm diminishing the person that I'm already with, yep. right? Like, you know, you make it mean all of these things and it does keep you stuck in this place where, you know, like, are they a good person? Sure. Are you a good person? Sure. Do you have a good relationship? Sure. But like, is that how you're going to live the rest of your life? Like, okay, check, check, check. We're, yeah. we're quote unquote fine yeah it's and all surface so, level it's all surface level exactly exactly um uh, okay well what um uh, what else like besides like scarce I mean I, I think that that's a huge one right like, yeah, yeah. that's the one they come out swinging with me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well there's not enough you know not enough time not enough space and everything um mm -hmm. but I mean kind of what you were we were talking about there of you know like oh it's all fine so why you know why would I ask for more Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I should be grateful again. I should be grateful. Why would I ask for more in this? You know, like what right do I have to ask for more? And that's another issue within the queer community in general, like individually and collectively is the people pleasing tendency. And I know this, you know, this is not just in the, in the queer community, but within the queer community, it's very, very common because if you think about you know, whether, whenever you figured out that you're like, oh, I am queer. Yes, I am. You know, and you have like whatever, you know, cultural or religious narrative or just societal narrative of like, you know, queer is less than, right. It's something else. And so you start to want to stay under the radar. Mm -hmm. And so in staying under the radar, you'll, you'll go, ah, oh, yes, I will do that thing. I will not create conflict. I will not ask for more because I should be grateful, you know, like, Hey, they, they are nice to me and they know I'm gay. So that's, I should be grateful for that. Right. Like they're, they're not yelling at me or doing anything. And so coming from that kind of mindset, you go into a relationship and then it's double time. You got two queer people doing that. And so it's like, Oh yeah. Do you, you know, how dare you ask for any sort of needs aside from just the basics. Right. Because everyone's just like, okay, like I'm not gonna, not going to avoid conflict. Like, or I'm going to avoid conflict. I'm not going to voice my needs. I'm not going to voice like, Hey, there's an issue here because again, we'll go back to the scarcity. Right. But it's, it's in those people pleasing tendencies that are so embedded and so rooted, especially from it, from the queer identity. And we'll get into a lot of the trouble in terms of being able to expand in an actual relationship um, in voicing your needs and voicing your desires. Yeah, well, and it makes so much sense because, yeah, as, you know, queer people, you know, a lot of people who, and we hear stories of this all, all the time, this is like the, the narrative where it's just like you come out and then now people hate you, right, and yeah. especially like the people who you love or the people that you've grown up with or, you know, your, your family, your friends, you know, like, all of a sudden, like, that's why people are so scared to come out in the first place is because, yeah, because yeah, it's just like, well, <laughs> if I come out, then 
I, you know, might get kicked out of my house. You know, I might get beat up. I might get, you know, uh, berated, like all this stuff. And so then that becomes the pattern in which you operate inside of conflict, right? Where it's just oh, like, yeah. I'm going to get hurt in some way if I say my truth or who I truly am. And then, yeah, that's showing up in partnerships. Where it's just like, well, I can't, even though like you're in a partnership with another person who has a similar experience <laughs> yeah. with you, you know, you're still like that pattern is still ingrained. And so therefore, you know, trying to speak your needs, like it's hard. It's really hard. Oh yeah. I yeah. mean, that's, that's another, like, I mean, real quick here is, you know, that's another common thing is it's hard to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I mean, for humans at large, but especially <laughs> in the queer space, because your vulnerability of coming out most likely has been used against you at some point in time. And so two people coming in and going, yeah, the last time I was vulnerable really sucked. I lost people. I was, you know, criticized. I was, you know, outcasted back to the isolation space. And so it's, again, even harder to voice needs again, because that's going to be vulnerable. And you're just like, I don't know if I can do that again. Right. And so it's, yeah. it's all this patterning, all this conditioning that is not only happening for you, but it's happening for your relationship as a whole. Yeah. It's a lot of cards stacked against you. Those are some, <laughs> those are some hefty cards. We only talked about like three of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are the, those are, those are three. <laughs> those are just three three that people deal with um well we're gonna go on another break and what I want to talk about when we come back is okay now we've talked about like ooh, the heaviness we've talked about the heaviness um so what do we do you know I really love to make these shows more um action oriented and so it's yeah. like what can we what can we do and also like what are the possibilities so we got actions we got some rainbows yeah. later haha <laughs> pun intended <laughs> Um, <laughs> so many rainbows, so many rainbows, <laughs> so many rainbows. Um, so when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about, okay, like now that we've gotten really clear about like where the hurt is, you know, how do we go into the healing space? So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Elizabeth Cunningham show. Uh, we are here with Leanna Greaves talking about queer dating and heteronormative world. And uh, woo, we have gotten through so much on the show already. And, um, you know, we talked a lot about like the hurt, like the pain points, like what people are really dealing with in the last section. And uh, I want to talk a little bit more into like healing okay, like, do, are, are we doomed? Yeah. Are all us, are yeah, let's all not us stop there. Forever, <laughs> Liana, help us. <laughs> like, well, everyone, here's, here's the news. <laughs> oh, man, all the healing is completely possible. And I mean, that's, that's what I love about my work is, really being able to yeah take all the pain points take all the limiting beliefs take all the things we're walking into relationships with as queer people and dismantling what does not serve us right mm -hmm. going ah that is not for me i will toss that to the side i will make space for what is actually mine right it's because it's your your container is so jam-packed with <laughs> everything that you've been told whether directly or indirectly about what it means to be queer what it means to be in a queer relationship we're gonna take those out bit by bit not trying to get overwhelmed right and that's when you'll start to actually feel like oh my gosh there is room here there is room for me not only to grow there's room for me to actually think of what's possible for me think of what I actually desire not what I've been told to desire or told to be grateful for right and so it's the first step is understanding that it is completely possible to do that, right? You don't have to take that really tightly packed box, put it into the corner and just be like, well, that's just always going to be there. No, like you can take that and we can go through it. We can look at it. We can analyze it all from that scientist perspective, right? We're not going to go blaming and shaming or any of that nature, right? Which is very common in the queer space but we're going to look at it and go, ah, 
that idea that, you know, queer relationships are all sex based. You know, is that is that true for you? Who knows? Let's let's look at it. Let's get curious about it. And we can take pieces of it or we can take the whole thing and toss it, whatever it may be. Right. And so it's really understanding that it is totally possible. So like just first, that is always my first thing with clients is going, it's totally possible. I know it from my own personal perspective. I know it from the clients I work with. I know it from my own friends in the queer community. I've seen it. I've felt it. I know it. And so really just conveying that to, to clients and to whoever I'm, I'm interacting with. And then once I, once I have them on, on, on board, we sail away and actually look at, okay, what do you, what do you desire? What do you want? You know, if, if you came into this queer identity with nothing external around you, no things slinging at you, what would you actually desire? What feels good? Mm -hmm. And understanding that like, that is going to take time to navigate through. It's going to take trial and error and that's okay right and so understanding that it's you almost continue even like what it's about too yeah <laughs> it's, about, it's about the discovery of it yeah so you know like, it, it comes back to like that people pleasing tendency right like oh the perfectionism like I must be okay the whole time and it's like <laughs> no it's what <laughs> you know like this is exploration this is for you to get curious to like do I like that no I don't do I like that? Oh yeah, I do. Yeah. Whatever it may be. Right. And so just being able and, and if, you know, if you are engaged with a partner understanding, like they are, I always try to think of it like, yeah, they're your, they're your partner. Like think of it as like, we're in an experiment we're looking like, oh, what, what do you have written down? Oh, you have that. Let's, let's add in that variable. Right. And so like, just getting like really playful about it. I'm just like, we're learning, we're creating. And so when, when I was mentioning like the wild West mentality earlier, Mm -hmm. this is where I like to say like yes we're in the wild west which means we can get so fun and creative right as opposed to like there's nothing here we can take and be like oh because there's nothing here there's everything here right and mm -hmm. so just really embracing that and feeling empowered in that and then we'll go into each little limiting belief that people may have mm -hmm. What's the importance of going through uh, limiting beliefs, going through rather? Yeah. And so, I mean, I, how I work with clients is really like, okay, basically like getting down all the things that swirl around your head about what a relationship is supposed to look like, how you're supposed to show up in a relationship, how your partner is supposed to show up in a relationship and all those kinds of factors of whatever is coming into play. We get that all clear. We get that out when we go, ah, <laughs> what are some of the what are some of the limiting beliefs that people usually have yeah I mean so like one of them that I mentioned earlier was that you know <laughs> it's all about sex right any anytime you say queer identity like oh I'm queer everyone instantly goes to oh my god she has sex with women <laughs> what <laughs> you know and so it's it's often you know that that's a big one for clients is like you know if if the sex is okay then we're okay, right? You know, like it's all good. If the sex isn't okay, then we're not okay. And it's it's basic, like they they put all their eggs in the one basket, um, right. and and so you know that's that's a limiting belief. Uh, another limiting belief would be, you know, depending on your culture and your religion, you can come into of like, and whether this is subconscious or conscious, whatever it may be, is that, you know, I am not worthy of a healthy relationship because I am queer, mm -hmm. and so understanding that if you are going in with that mentality, you're going to have, you're going to follow that belief of settling or not even like attempting to go into a relationship, even though you want one, um, you know, and there's all kinds of various ones that can be embedded in culture and religion. Um, but those would be a couple that always come up for, for clients. Yeah, that makes total sense. Um, yeah, thank you for spelling some of that out too, as well, because then it's like, it makes it, you know, it just makes it more real, you know, because these, you know, this is what people are actually like dealing with and, mm -hmm. and going through and, um, and I, one of the things that you uh, mentioned as well is like, you know, just knowing that this is possible for you. Yeah, you know, just starting with that, like foundational, like, what this is 
the relationship that you want is possible. Even if you don't know exactly what that looks like Mm -hmm. yet, right? Like you don't even have to know, just know, (laughs) just know that whatever it is, it's totally, totally possible. Um, And I also love what you said. uh, And it made me think of the phrase, like, you know, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. It's not that every single thing that you've been taught is like bad um, or doesn't fit. Like, it's just that, are you applying it in a way that actually works for you? Mm -hmm. And so I really love that too, because it's not just like totally wiping the slate clean. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, what are some of the things that I've learned? Do I want to keep them and embody them? Or do I want to be like, no, that's not really, that's not really me. And then being able to create from there. Um, And I know that you're someone who like loves curiosity. So I love that like (laughs) part of it, right? Oh Um, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) One of my absolute favorites. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, all right. Curious. Here we go. (laughs) <laughs> oh it's so beautiful okay cool so yeah so we've got you know we've got the belief the possibilities we've worked through some limiting beliefs like we're starting to create just like okay well now what's possible oh man you know and this because I've seen it so many different ways for so many different people right is some of like the common things that I see as like what is possible that I not only see like embodied in myself, but I see embodied in clients like time after time after time is like one of the things that often people don't think is possible is really like treating themselves with gentleness and kindness in this whole process, right? Of, of being so used to being so hard on yourself because you are queer or because you don't fit what you're supposed to fit, right? In quotations. Um, and so one of the things that, you know, is, is so, so, so possible is to really truly love yourself fully, including the queer identity, right? Because the work that I do is not only about being a, a partner to another person, it's also about being a partner to yourself, right? Mm-hmm. And so in that, it's going to be gentleness and kindness and I know that that's a thing that people after being done you know of of working together and everything I'm like wow I never thought that was possible right I never thought that I could actually let go of that and you know that's that's one thing and in that is no longer blaming their themselves or blaming their queer identity on any of the issues or problems or situations that they're experiencing in relationships of like well, this wouldn't happen if I wasn't gay, you know, like, or it's, it's happening because I am gay, right? Like if, if you have like that religious mentality sometimes. Mm-hmm. And so it's no longer going, this problem is because I'm gay. It's going, oh, this, there is a problem. Let's get curious. Let's explore it. Like, what is it? You know, what is behind this? Like, let's actually, <laughs> let's actually see what's possible to learn from this. Right. And so it's a lot of slowdown. The slowdown is so possible in this whole process that's really beautiful and what I hear and what you're sharing is just a total freedom yep liberation yeah ah beautiful all right well we're gonna take a another quick break here and when we come back we're going to talk about takeaways and you know, what can, how can you take this knowledge and actually apply it to your own life? And Leanna has a giveaway. So definitely, (laughs) definitely stick around for the giveaway. All right, we will be right back. Welcome back to our last segment of the Elizabeth Cunningham show today. Um, If you are just tuning in, um, this is Leanna Griebsch, and we are talking about queer dating um, in a heteronormative world. And um, if you if you are just tuning in, definitely listen to the uh, recording of this when it comes out. There's been so much um, beauty in this episode and what you have shared. So thank you, Leanna, so oh, much man. for like, coming thank on you. and sharing. Oh, of course. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate you. 
Um, okay, so what, uh, in this, in this last segment, you know, what I really love to do is to talk about, you know, now that we've, now that you've given us all of this knowledge, all of this information kind of laid it out, what are some of the takeaways? Like if, if there's one takeaway that someone gets from this episode, what would that, what would that one takeaway be that would just like land it all? Oh, no pressure. All right, no pressure. Let's see. Um, the one takeaway is, I mean, kind of based off what we were just talking about in that last segment is, you know, knowing that queer people have, you know, they, they know their pain points. They know, you know, they know those obstacles so well, but what they don't know well is the possibilities. Mm -hmm. And so understanding that you holding on to those things so tightly just because they've always been there, it's okay to let go of that. And I know that can feel scary. I know that can feel intimidating, but also in that release, you're freeing up that space, right? And so taking away that (laughs) there is so much possible, there is so much to create and so much to grow within, Um, you know, and just like really, I keep saying it, I will keep saying it, especially if you follow me, you know, I keep saying it, but really just continuing to say it, continuing to say it, and then begin telling yourself the same exact thing. And just really feeling that in yourself that there's so much, there's so much more if you're willing to really seek that out, create the space for it. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna have a curveball, curveball question cool. for you. Go All for right. It. What does love mean to you? Oh man. Love means expansion to me. Um, Love is, you know, it it very much is similar to the possibilities, like love is possible, possibility, right? But it's really love is expansion. Love is just like that. It's the play space, right? Like we go into the field and we actually see, oh my God, there is so much to explore. There's so much to expand in. And it's not this constricting thing that it can often feel like understanding that that's not love, right? So love is just, love is expansion. Mm, beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm, I'm just like, just like basking in that answer. <laughs> 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 All right. And I want to um, turn the full attention to Leanna and what she does. Um, And we're going to do, I'm going to promote you and have you shamelessly promote yourself. Um, (laughs) And then we're going to go into the giveaway. So uh, uh, you're promoting your Love Out Proud coaching program. Do you want to give us just like a, you know, yeah. One to two minute breakdown of what your program is. Yeah, for sure. So <laughs> Love Out Proud is my, my uh, it's a 12 week coaching program. Um, one-on-one where we kind of dissect and explore all the limiting beliefs that you hold, you know, as a queer person and, and wanting to enter into relationships or you're currently in a relationship. And so in the program, we explore, you know, you as a partner, what you actually desire in a partnership, what are, you know, relationship agreements that you want. We explore communication, all kinds, which is one of my favorites, (laughs) Um, vulnerability, boundaries, and just really kind of clearing away the space so that you can actually dream and visualize what what it is that you desire. And the whole time I am with you as that guide, I am with you as that coach, I am with you as that mentor and that support that we oftentimes will lack in the queer space. Um, and it's all coming from the queer perspective. So we, when we talk about vulnerability, when we talk about dating, it's all coming from the queer perspective. Um, and so just understanding that, <laughs> I know that I know that space personally, you know, and so that's just the way that I am going to show up in those, in those sessions and everything. Um, so that is my Love Out Proud coaching program in a nutshell. 
Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Anybody who gets to work with you is very privileged because <laughs> you are, you are, you are an ex excellent guide, excellent coach, excellent mentor. So um, I hope that the people listening who really want to work with you, reach out to you. And that leads to your giveaway. Woo! Share with us your giveaway. What are you giving away? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, so because, you know, as we've talked about, you know, possibilities is such a key thing here. Um, I am giving away one visioning session. So it's a 60 minute session. And the way I do visioning um, is it's, it's like a three-parter. We do breath work together. We do coaching together. And then we do an actual like visualization practice together. And that's just to kind of start tapping into that creativity um, that we often are <laughs> afraid to enter. And so I am there as support. Um, and so you can DM me on Instagram and everything. And I will set up a call, a 60 minute call. And you can at least explore what it is that is, you know, that you desire and what is possible. All right. Beautiful. Yes. And um, all of Leanna's contact information is um, in the show notes uh, in this as well. And so uh, like she said, you know, reach out to her on Instagram, DM on Instagram at <laughs> Leanna Greech, which is L-I-A-N-A. -A. I'm totally going to spell your whole name. G R I E B S C H. Woo! Nailed it. Man, I needed you in kindergarten when I was trying to learn how to spell my name. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, so, yeah, reach out to Liana. Um, uh, and I hope that I, I want to hear from you as well. Um, what did you get out of today's show? Uh, what are you taking away? What are you now taking on? Or even what questions do you now have? You know, reach out to myself or definitely reach out to Leanna if you yes, have please. extra, you know, if, if what you heard today brought up questions, you know, reach out to Leanna, get that free session, mm -hmm. snag that free session. Um, <laughs> um, uh, and, uh, but yeah, make sure that you get what you need um, out of listening to this show today. That's what we're here for. I mean, obviously we love to talk, but the reason that we're talking is because we want to support you. Um, Leanna, is there any closing thing that you would like to say or address? Yeah. So for all my, for all my queer babies, all my queer loves out there, I just really like, I want you to know that there is a space for you to be seen, to be held and to be supported in all of this, um, you know, and even just interacting with me on like Instagram and everything, um, just knowing that it is there, even if you don't work with me directly, I hold the space and I want to be able to see you. So please reach out. And for all my non-queer babies out there, don't worry, I still love you. <laughs> and But understand uh, too, like if this is something that you know someone else who would benefit from the, this or just interacting with me, please send them my way and you know understand that you seeing them in that space and supporting them is really, really meaningful. And um, thank you for being an ally. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much, Leanna. I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate your presence, your knowledge, your expertise, and everything that you brought forward today. I think this has been an incredibly um, valuable, um, I almost call it a session show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like Wait, who's coaching who? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, you know, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you so, so very much. Um, and yeah, make sure that you reach out to Leanna um, if that is what you feel called to do. Thank you so much for listening in or watching in to the Elizabeth Cunningham Show, Courageously Expanding in Love. And we have a new episode live every Tuesday, 3 p.m. Pacific time. Make sure that you um, go to the Transformation Network Facebook page and you can watch it live. Or if you watch the show later, you can catch us on YouTube or pretty much any podcast um, <laughs> channel at all. Um, just go ahead and Google the Elizabeth Cunningham show and you will be able to find it on whatever 
platform you would like to listen or watch. All right. Thank you all so much. Appreciate you. Keep loving. You have been listening to The Elizabeth Cunningham Show, courageously expanding love with me, Elizabeth Cunningham. Tune in live every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on TransformationTalkRadio.com, where we shed light on relationships, sex, love, and the ways we wish we could be, but never thought were possible. Learn to love yourself and create the relationships you want. Connect with me at elizabethannecunningham.com. That's elizabethannecunningham.com.